Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,371. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, 1,370 to 1,371, so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we've got a great video here. We've got to see how to create an Excel formula to add the last five values in an Excel table. And we'll get to see how to use the index function to create a dynamic range. Now, we have an Excel table using the Excel table feature here. And any range in an Excel table is dynamic. So if we start adding values to the bottom, the range for this column will automatically expand. Now, I've done a huge video on dynamic ranges using index and offset function for my Control-Shift-Enter book. Here's the name of the video, and that's the link. Now, in that video, I show you how to do dynamic ranges for everything, getting the last number in a column, last text item, last mixed data, and a bunch of other dynamic ranges. But one of the formulas that you will see in that video was this one right here. I'm using index twice with a colon to create a dynamic range. Now, this formula will work regardless of whether or not we have an Excel table or not. So in this video, I'm going to click Escape. I want to do a similar formula, but it'll be a little bit easier because of the fact that we have a dynamic Excel table. Now, I'm going to start off by seeing if we can actually use a lookup function to look up the last value. Then we're going to see if we can get a similar formula to look up the fifth from the last value. Now, we're going to use index equals index. Now, index is a lookup function. We give it an array of values. These are the potential values we want to go look up and bring back to the cell. Now, watch what happens when I highlight the entire column. It puts in the table name and the field name in square brackets. That is a dynamic range that will always respect this column of values, regardless of whether we reduce the size or increase the size. Now, comma, row number. That means which row number do you want to look up? Now, it's not the 22, 21. It's the relative position. So that would be the first, second, third, all the way down to, I think, the 18th position. So guess what? If we're looking to look up the last value, I simply use the count function. Now, we're always going to have numbers in this column. And notice the screen tip says counts the number of cells in the range that contain numbers. So that is perfect. Now, I highlight the same exact range. And notice the same table name and column name, dynamic, close parentheses. Now, I'm going to highlight row number and hit the F9 key to evaluate. I was one off. There's actually 19 values here. Control Z. But that will be totally dynamic. Count will always tell us how many numbers are in that column. And that will work for index. Close parentheses and Enter. Notice it looks up the last number. If I were to come down to the bottom and type 43 and Enter, notice now it's looking up the last value. Now I'm going to Control Z, Z to undo that. Now how do we look up fifth to the last? Well, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy this. Control C, Escape. Come down here, F2 to put it in edit mode, Control V. Well, guess what? If I click right inside the first parentheses, that's not what we want. We want whatever the last is minus not 5, but 4. So I'm going to say minus. And we definitely want to link our formula to this cell that says how many up from the last. That way we can change this, and our formula will automatically update. Now, that's minus 5, so I need to add 1 back in. So that will give us not 19, but 19 minus 4, 15. If I were to highlight this and hit F9, there it is, Control-Z, and Enter. Now, notice this is totally dynamic. If I come up here and change this to 6, of course, the last one stays as the last one, but now this is the sixth up from the bottom, Control-Z. Now, notice that the index function is actually looking up a value. Well, if I hit F2, we can actually get index to look up a cell reference. Here's how we do it. In edit mode, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to use Control-C-C to not only copy that, but open up the clipboard. 
Now, if Control C C doesn't work for you, you actually have to open up the clipboard home. That little dialog launcher, and then with options, set Control C C to work. All right, we have one formula element that'll look up the last value. Let's get this formula F2. Highlight in edit mode, Control C. So we have both of our formula elements. Escape. I'll expand the column here. And here's how you create a dynamic range. Equal sign. The first cell reference I need to look up is 5 from the bottom. So I click on that. And here's the magic. If I type a colon, instantly index is no longer going to look up a value. It'll deliver the cell reference. Now, that's the fifth to the last cell, cell A17. After the colon, now I click on the index to look up the last one. And there it is. It'll create a range for us. If I highlight this in edit mode and hit F9 to evaluate it, look at that. That is a dynamic range, always getting the five last values. Control Z. Now I'm going to hit Enter, change this to 6. Enter. And now that's reporting a value error because it cannot display all those values in a single cell. But watch this. In edit mode, we can prove to ourselves that the formula is working right. I highlight it, hit F9, and look at that. It got the last six values. Control Z. Now, it looks like this is an array formula, and we might have to use some special keystroke to enter it. But index colon index always delivers a range of values that any function can understand that accepts a range. So I add sum, open parentheses, come to the end, close parentheses, and our sum function, when I hit Enter, works perfectly. If I change this to 5 and Enter, there it is, 504. Now we can verify by coming and highlighting the last five numbers in our data set and look down to the status bar. It says sum. 504. That is pretty amazing. This is a formula using index colon index to add the last five values from an Excel table column. All right, we'll see you next video.